Hello folks, it's the Pace Chaser again. Welcome to another one of my videos. This is another one looking at photographs of KHCT buses at Kingston upon Hull City Transport. It's the second part. In the first part I looked at photographs mainly that I'd taken, uh, which range from the council era right through to the early stagecoach days. Um, as we discussed, the uh, City Council sold KHCT to a consortium of Cleveland Transit and uh, its own employees in December 1993 and then in November 1994 Stagecoach bought Cleveland Transit and they also bought the uh, employees section of KHCT so it became part of Stagecoach. So we looked from the council era right through to the early Stagecoach days. In this second bit we're going to look at the very late council era and the very early Cleveland Transit era. So most of the buses are going to be in the hull azure and white. There are no vehicles in the Cleveland Transit livery uh, in this one. That's going to be the next part. There are a couple of rogue ones. There's one slightly earlier and there's a couple uh, that are a bit later as well. But generally we're in that kind of area around sort of 1993-1994. The majority of these photographs we're going to show were taken by Jeff Jones. I've bought them um, via a well-known internet auction site with the copyright um, they were bought as slides i've had them printed unfortunately the uh, printers that i use have made um, a bit of a mess of them they're quite dark the originals were a lot lighter but we'll uh, we'll try and do our best for historical value it's well worth um, seeing them so as i said i bought the copyright with them but it did respectfully ask if i could mention jeff jones when using the uh, pictures so i'm happy to do so so all of them in this are jeff jones pictures unless stated otherwise. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in fleet number order as well. Uh, so we're going to start with vehicle 51. So as you can see, this bus is in the Kingstonian coach livery. Um, Kingstonian was launched in 1982 with three new Leyland Leopards and three second-hand Leyland Leopards. Um, as we discussed last time, bus deregulation took place in 1986, but coach deregulation, so it was express coach services, um, excursions and holiday tours, that kind of thing, they were deregulated in 1980. Prior to deregulation, even if you wanted to run something like an excursion, you had to have a license for it, and uh, any existing operators in the area plus British Rail would object, so you, you often struggle to get a license. So, for example, if you wanted to run an excursion from Hull to Bridlington, you had to get that licensed. Um, the license would state how many times you could run it, so you may be allowed to do it eight times in a year. It might state uh, which months you could run it between, so it might be you could only run it between May and September. It would state things like how many vehicles you could use on each excursion, so there might be a maximum of two vehicles per trip. So if you had any more people wanting to go, then you had to turn them away, basically. Um, and it would also say where you could pick up. So, uh, for example, if you're going, to, going from Hull, you might want to pick up in Beverley, but uh, the chances are you wouldn't be allowed to on your licence, because... Um, for example, East Yorkshire and British Rail would object. So all that was swept away in 1980. You could just run excursions and uh, holiday tours as you saw fit. Um, and that encouraged more people to have a go at running coaches, including quite a few mun municipal operators. It was uh, quite controversial. There was a general feeling among existing coach operators that the municipals should stick to what they were doing, basically running buses around their respective towns and cities and leave coaching to uh, the professionals, as they would probably put it. Um, it turned into a roaring success. Some people had more success than others. KHCT had a lot of success with Kingstonian. Uh, the, buses, the coaches were available for private hire, as well as the uh, day excursions and the extended tours. But yeah, it was very, very popular. They soon warranted extra vehicles and more new vehicles. Uh, so 51 was purchased in April 1987. It was originally registered D51ORH. It was a Volvo B10M with Plaxton Paramount 3200 body, uh, which featured 50 seats and a toilet for uh, extended kind of tours work and motor uh, tours that use the motorway and things like that. In uh, June 1992, it was re-registered as IIL1321, which is how we see it here. This photo was taken in February 1994, so quite early on in the Cleveland Transit era. It seemed a bit pointless re-registering um, some of these vehicles. It was a fad, um, particularly in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, basically anything that was more than a few weeks old was uh, re-registered. Um, 
even in this photo, the bus was only just less than seven years old, so it wasn't old by any means. And as you can see, it's, it still looks smart, but uh, it, as I say, it was a fad to re-register them with uh, dateless Northern Ireland registrations to try and hide their uh, true age. So we move on now to 60, the uh, Leyland National, new uh, in January 1985. We saw this uh, last time in plain white livery with uh, stagecoach fleet names. I'll just show you that picture again, there it is. But this photo again from February 1994 shows it in its original livery, which as you can see was a version of the Kingstonian coach livery with the Handy Rider fleet name. As I mentioned last time, it had 24 seats and a wheelchair lift, which was accessed via a second door on the near side in the middle. It was used on dedicated services for wheelchair users and people with disabilities who couldn't use the normal bus services. Um, as I said, it served particular areas of the city on different days and it would go as close as possible to the uh, passenger's house and then uh, pick them up um, as near as possible to the home address as it could. And it would run often to the city centre, but sometimes I think it went to the out-of-town supermarkets as well. So last time I promised you an Alexander-bodied Dennis Dominator, and here is one. This is 110 B110 UAT. Seen here exiting the bus station in October 1993. So there were 10 vehicles in this batch, uh, 101 to 110B, 101 to 110 UAT. You'd think with 10 vehicles there couldn't be much variety, but you'd be wrong. Um, 101 to 105 had Maxwell gearboxes, which quickly became difficult to get spare parts for. So as a result, those five were withdrawn much earlier than the last five. Uh, 106 to 110 had a different make of gearbox, I think, if memory serves me correctly. They had Voith gearboxes, so they remained in service a lot longer. Uh, right up to the end of the 90s in some cases, including this one. Uh, 108, 109, 110 were delivered with high-backed seats and were in Kingstonian coach livery. They were marketed as super deckers um, and they were basically intended for private hires as well as normal service. They also were used when fairly new on the um, 99X service, a short-lived express route from Brandzome to the city centre. It ran from Brandzome into Hull in the morning peak and in the opposite direction in the evening peak. And it was non-stop, um, I think, if I remember rightly, from the city centre to sort of Sutton Road, that kind of area. But yeah, it was a short-lived service. Uh, they were marketed as super deckers. Uh, luckily, they didn't go for some sort of Superman-style branding. They just had a subtle yellow lettering underneath the front windscreen. As you can see in this shot, 110 uh, still retains its coach seats. Here you can just see them, particularly through the upper deck windows there. Uh, about the look of it with the original maquette, the uh, Kingstonian style maquette. Eventually, 108, 109, 110 roll reseated with bus seats that had come out of Atlanteans, um, and they remained in service for quite some time afterwards. So, in addition to the seats and the uh, gearboxes, uh, 101 to 107 had bus seats when they were new. They were delivered in different liveries. Um, 101 to 104, 106, and 107 came in the blue and white livery. And they were the first new vehicles to carry the 1984 livery. So these Metropolitans are in the 1972 livery. You can see um, the proportions of blue and white there. In the early 80s, there was what became known as the intermediate livery, which was basically the same as the 1972 livery, except that the blue at the bottom was uh, extended upwards to the base of the lower deck windows. The idea of that was that uh, if a panel needed replacing down at the bottom, it was only painted in one colour, so they could paint it and put it back on um, a lot quicker. And then the 1984 livery did away with a central blue band. Um, the front of this bus is in the 1984 livery. So they got rid of the central blue band, just had uh, blue at the top and bottom and white in between. These were the first new buses, as I say, to be delivered in the 1984 livery. I think the first bus to carry it was actually a Metro bus that was repainted. As you can see, most of 110 here is in an advert for JWE mobile phones. Uh, John Weatherall Electronics, a company who were uh, at the forefront of selling mobile phones when they were just becoming popular. So yeah, as we mentioned, 101 to 104, 106 and 107 were in the 1984 blue and white livery. Uh, 108, 9, 10 were in Kingstonian coach livery. And 105 arrived in uh, all over white um, as a base for an advert which was applied locally at uh, the depot in Hull uh, for Viking Radio, which was a newly launched at the time they were bought uh, commercial radio station. These buses entered service 
in uh, late 1984, uh, this particular one, November 1984. The only thing all 10 had in common was they were all fitted with FM radios when they were new uh, and speakers so that they could play Viking radio to the unsuspecting passengers on board. Uh, 110 was no renumbered 210 when uh, Stagecoach renumbered the fleet. They renumbered um, Cleveland Transit, Stagecoach Darlington, um, Hartlepool and the uh, whole operation into a common series in the mid-90s. So it became 210 and it survived until August of 2000. So it was quite a late survivor for its batch. It was sold via a dealer to Northern Blue of Burnley but unfortunately it caught fire whilst it was on delivery from the dealer to uh, Northern Blue. And therefore it was uh, sent for scrap and Northern Blue got a different vehicle instead. So as we said last time, most of the Dennis Dominators with KHCT were East Lancashire bodies. Uh, and most of them had uh, an, a version of bodywork that was basically a copy of the Alexander R-Type. A good example of it here is uh, 125C125CAT, which was delivered in January 1986. This bus was uh, also sold to Northern Blue. It managed to actually make it there. It was sold in July of 2000. So again, it was a late survivor for the uh, C-registered batch. And it went to various other operators afterwards. It was finally scrapped in April of 2007 at the uh, ripe old age of 21. This shot is from the late council era in uh, October 1993. So here we've got a shot of 132E132 SAT. Uh, when it was delivered in uh, September 1987, this bus looked very much the same as 125 that we've just seen. In July 1991, it was damaged by fire. I think it was an arson attack, if I remember correctly, and it destroyed the back of the upper deck. It was sent to East Lancashire for a new body to be fitted, and it came back with dual doors, um, seating 45 upstairs and 21 downstairs. And it was intended for um, use on the ferry bus service, as you can see by the branding for North Sea Ferries. It uh, returned to service in October of 1992. This shot from February 1994, as you can see, it, it did stray quite frequently onto normal service. Here it's in the bus station, just about to go to Greatfield on the 42 service. It was uh, rebuilt to single door again in April of 2002. Uh, and it was sold, it was another one to go to Northern Blue in September of 2004. And it was exported to Italy three years later, 2007. It may well still be there, who knows. Um, but yeah, a, an interesting bus with a, a quite a varied history. So this is one of the few shots in this collection that's not by Jeff Jones. Uh, I'm not sure who the original photographer this one is. It's uh, the copyright has passed to me, I bought it uh, with copyright. So it's, this is 136E136SAT. The photo taken on the muck, i.e. the parking area behind Hull bus station in 1990. This bus was one of three repainted in 1989 into special liveries to commemorate the 90th anniversary of municipal transport in Hull, as you can see by the lettering above the destination blind there. One three seven carried the um, former tram livery, which we'll see a bit later on on 252. Uh, 136, as you can see, carried a 1931 blue and white motor bus livery, and 135 carried the uh, streamlined livery. We saw 135 last time in uh, part one of this series. So this bus uh, was withdrawn in March 1999, and it doesn't appear to have been sold to anybody else. It appears to have been uh, scrapped after service with Stagecoach. So back to the Jeff Jones photographs now in this one from March 1994 of another one of the same batch, 139E139SAT in the uh, standard blue and white livery. Again, apologies for the darkness. It's not the uh, original slide or the original photographer. I've just um, had them printed at a certain high street photography shop and uh, the last batch I took in were really, really good. Unfortunately, this batch, as you can see, have come out really dark. Although we are a few months into the uh, Cleveland Transit era in this shot, uh, the bus still carries the KHCT Three Crowns logo. Uh, a concerted effort will be made before much longer to uh, take them off because that branding was still owned by the council and to uh, replace it with a new KHCT logo. But yeah, this one, uh, March 1994, still carrying the original branding. 
along with the blue and whites name of the destination brand there that was applied during the bus war in 1992-1993 to try and make the buses stand out from the competition a bit more. So we've got 201 um, H201XKH which was a Leyland Swift with uh, Reeve Burgess bodywork. This was actually new to York Pullman um, who were a company that had been acquired by KHCT in February 1990. This was delivered new to them in September 1990, hence the higher than normal fleet number. Uh, the ones delivered to Kingstonian at Hull tended to have lower fleet numbers. It was transferred from York Pullman to KHCT in February 1993. As you can see, it's been used on normal service. It's branded up um, with the blue and whites branding as well, uh, rather than Kingstonian coach. So it, it was kind of used to augment the minibuses, the uh, Ivaco minibuses, that we saw last time and we'll see a few of those uh, later on as well uh, and indeed it's been used on the pier service which was number 50 at the uh, time shot taken in october 1993 uh, again towards the end of the council ownership as you can see it didn't have a destination blind so it's just got a piece of uh, what appears to be uh, laminated plastic in the uh, front windscreen with the destination on it This bus was transferred to Cleveland Coaches in uh, August 1994 and then Stagecoach sold off the coaching operations. They didn't uh, find them, they didn't want to keep them. Uh, so they sold the uh, Cleveland Coaches operation to Delta of uh, Middlesbrough in 1995 and this bus uh, went with it, so it passed to Delta. So another triumph from the slide printers, you can see they've done this one backwards. Luckily, with the uh, wonder of technology, I've managed to uh, take a picture of that photo on my phone and then reverse it so you can see how it should look. So this is uh, vehicle 252 PRH252G. It was delivered new in January 1969. In 1979, it and 245 PRH245G were painted in the old tram livery as seen here, the maroon and cream, to commemorate the 80th anniversary of municipal transport in Hull. This view is taken at a rally, I believe it's at Santoff, but I'm not 100% sure of that. It was uh, taken in 1979, uh, and again, I don't know who the original photographer of this one is. Uh, the copyright passed to me with the slide, but uh, it wasn't recorded who took the photo originally. 252 survived through until September of 1992. It was actually withdrawn in August 1990, but it was kept in storage in case they needed it. And eventually, in September 92, they decided they didn't, and it was sold for scrap. So we've got another of the same batch here in a photo by Jeff Jones from February 1994. This is 257 PRH 257G. Delivered new in February of 1969. As you can see by the green livery on the sides, it was transferred to CityLink in June 1990, where it became fleet number C12. In September 1992, um, the CityLink fleet were renumbered back into the main series, so it became 257 again, still with uh, CityLink. And then in April 1993, CityLink was uh, abolished, and the remaining vehicles were put back into the main fleet. The uh, remaining green ones received blue and white fronts and rears, as you can see on this vehicle, um, and blue and white branding. It'll uh, stir up mixed emotions to Hull Bus Enthusiasts, this one. It's uh, lovely to see it still in service um, 25 years after it was delivered. But uh, back in the days of council ownership, before the bus wars and things, you would never have seen a KHCT bus carrying two separate liveries. But yeah, it was the last survivor of its batch and one of the last surviving Atlanteans in Hull. It, it was withdrawn in, in April of 1994. Um, at the ripe old age of 25 years and three months and it was sold for further service via a dealer um, it finished up with guide friday as an open topper and then after that it was reported um, being exported to greece as a mobile hoarding um, it was last seen there in 2007 it may well still exist uh, who knows hopefully somebody does but yeah a fine old vehicle as you can see it wasn't um, eking out its retirement it was still on full all day service uh, there it is on the 28th, having just run in from Brandzome and presumably about to go back there. Another interesting bus, another Jeff Jones shot from uh, February 1994. This is 343 NAT 343M. 
It was new in November 1973. It went to CityLink in August of 1990, where it became C14. Again, it was renumbered back to 343 when the CityLink fleet was renumbered in uh, September 1992, back into the main series. And it rejoined the main fleet in April 1993 when CityLink was abolished. And again, it's got the green CityLink livery on the sides and the blue and white livery on the front and the rear. Uh, what you will notice about it is it's got an East Lancashire front dome. Now, the story I got for this, this was one of uh, quite a lot of buses that were loaned by KHCT to Borough Line of Maidstone between 1987 and 1988. Borough Line were trying to enter the London tendered service market. They won some contracts to uh, run services in London. They ordered some new buses for them and the buses were delayed. So they had to hire in Atlanteans from KHCT and from Ipswich. And this is one of the Atlanteans that KHCT sent down. It was... Uh, down there between December 1987 and February 1988. Now the story I got, which came from somebody in KHCT's garage uh, via my late father, was that whilst it was down there on loan, it had a low bridge accident and uh, smashed the front of the upper deck and it was sent to East Lancashire Coach Builders for repair. Hence it came back with an East Lancashire front end. Now, what that doesn't explain is why it's got that particular style. East Lancashire didn't build that style of bodywork after about the mid-70s. It was about 1977, 78, they phased that out. So there are several possibilities. One is that they had um, an old part lying about that they hadn't used. Um, one is that they managed to build an old style part from the original drawings. Um, and the other one is they took one off a scrap bus and uh, put that on. But I don't know exactly um, how it ended up with the, the sort of 1970s style uh, front dome that it got and why it wasn't just repaired with a later style but anyway that's how it finished up um, that's the story I got it may be completely different as you can see it had a bit of a hard life it had lost uh, just about all of its opening windows upstairs as well so it must have been uh, very hot uh, thank goodness for the opening front windows that East Lancashire have fitted there when it went back into the main fleet, it was one of those buses that always seemed to be around. We touched on this last time, we'll go back to it a bit later on as well. Uh, there were some buses that you rarely saw and other ones that you seem to see all the time. Uh, funny enough, the first time it was in the main fleet, I don't recall seeing much of it, 343. Um, again, in, with CityLink C14, I don't recall seeing much of it there either. Uh, when it went back to the main fleet in April 1993, it was absolutely ubiquitous. Um, every Saturday I'd go to my aunties on Newbridge Road in East Hull. And either passing through Hull City Centre or on Newbridge Road itself on the 41 route, uh, 343 would be there. It was a late survivor among Atlanteans in Hull. It uh, was withdrawn in March 1994 and it went for further service with Taylors of Morley. Um, unfortunately, they were taken over by the people who owned K-Line not long afterwards and they withdrew all the uh, old double-deckers and replaced them with a mixture of re-engined Leland Nationals and newish DAFs. Uh, and what happened to it after that, I'm not entirely sure. The uh, further history of it doesn't seem to have been recorded. Another shot there of the uh, same bus, 343, just showing the offside. Again, apologies for the darkness of it. The uh, Again, it's how they've printed it when I've taken it down to the uh, Photoshop. You can just about make out what appears to be bus 156 in the background. We'll talk about that a bit later on uh, when we get to the minibus section. So here we've got a couple of Metro buses. We're back in the Lake Council area in October 1993. Another one by Jeff Jones. On the left you've got 501 LAT 501V. And on the right 506 LAT 506V. It appears that 501's in the middle of having its blind wound round. Because I don't remember the 27 going to Sainsbury Way. Uh, 506 is on a competitive service of East Yorkshire 56D. Uh, so it's been to the Longhill Estate, which was traditionally an East Yorkshire route. But this was, uh, again, during the bus war. So there was quite a lot of competition between the two companies. Um, 501 was a bus you saw a lot of. 506, um, not so much. Again, I, I mentioned last time, anybody who's ever taken bus numbers or wanted a particular photograph you know, of a, a particular bus um, probably comes to the conclusion that bus fleets have three or four vehicles with the same fleet number whereas some of them don't actually exist. Uh, 501 was in the former category. Every time you went anywhere near Hull, you would see 501. When I used to get my little fueling list when I was a kid from the garage and tick off the buses as I saw them. 501 was always marked on there. 
Uh, 506, very rarely. It's one of the buses you never seem to see. I don't really recall seeing it. I must have done. I think I saw them all eventually. But uh, yeah, I don't recall seeing it. It was a very rare bird. Or it appeared to be to me anyway. Probably to somebody else. They always saw 506 uh, and never saw 501. So we're going to take it at the same time. This is 502 LAT 502V. The batch weren't delivered in uh, fleet number order. 501 arrived in May 1980, whereas 502 and 506 beat it. They were both delivered to Hull in April 1980. They were withdrawn roughly the same time. 501, 502 in September of 1994. Uh, 506 lasted a little bit longer. It was July 1995 that was uh, withdrawn. At least for the first time. It was then reinstated in August of 1995. It was renumbered to 162 for some uh, unknown reason in uh, January of 96. And it was finally withdrawn in uh, April of 1998. Um, I think it probably worked in the, north in the northeast for the last few um, years of its life. I don't remember uh, seeing it around Hull. It may have come back to Hull, but yeah, I don't recall that. Some of them worked up around uh, Stockton and Darlington and that kind of area. But uh, they were withdrawn from whole service anyway, at but roughly the same time. Uh, 501, 502 both went to Ensign, who converted them to Open Top. And I believe they finished up on round London sightseeing tours. So we have 529, SAG 529W. This one was new in March 1981. It was withdrawn in September 1997 and sold for scraps. So quite a concise history for this one. Another Jeff Jones shot from October of 1993. Um, you can't see it very well because of the way it's been printed again, but you can you can make out it's quite scruffy. You can see the damage uh, where they've peeled adverts off um, on the side there, paint sort of chipping off on the roof, and just a general air of that dirtiness and wear. This is the uh, state the fleet had got into, unfortunately, as a result of the bus war. There wasn't the money there for fleet presentation, um, so a lot of vehicles ended up running in quite scruffy condition like that one. It was something that had never been seen at KHC. So they were always a really, really smart fleet. And to the credit, Cleveland Transit made them a smart fleet again um, within quite a short space of time. But yeah, it just shows you the uh, effect that the competition had on uh, KHCT. So we are back on the Ivaco minibuses, the Royals as they were marketed. We saw some of these in the last part as well. I may have mentioned that they are my sort of second favourite type of hull bus after the Metropolitan Scania's. Yes, you have purchased yes for about 15 million times. But yeah, anyway, this is 610 D610 MKH. It was delivered new in January 1987 with uh, most of the rest of its batch. It was originally named King James I. This one had a, a slightly strange end to its career. It was withdrawn after an accident in September of 1994. It was taken to the Liverpool Street Works uh, and it was scrapped in November 1994 and apparently it was used during the uh, demolition of uh, Liverpool Street to fill in one of the pits. They threw uh, a load of rubbish, uh, rubble and bits and pieces into one of the pits to fill it in. And allegedly the cut up parts uh, of 610 were among those. So it may well still be under the Asda store. As I think it was that they built on the site of Liverpool Street Works on Hesel Road. So if anybody fancies going to Asda with a metal detector, you may find parts of 610 underneath the floor. Um, not sure as they'd be too happy with it, but there you go. So we've got 614D614 MKH. It was delivered new as well in January 1987. Uh, it was in the normal Royal livery when it was delivered. It was called King George V. It was withdrawn in August 1996, uh, and if it had any subsequent history, it wasn't recorded. Now it's carrying here an advert for The Garage. This is a shot from October 1993, another Jeff Jones shot. Now the garage was actually Liverpool Street Works. The um, What had been the Liverpool Street garage became a central engineering works for um, KHCT during the sort of 70s and 80s. After deregulation, it had to try and justify its position. Um, there wasn't as much heavy overhauls and things going on. And it had to try and make a profit, um, as did the rest of the company. So what they did, they uh, started to sort of hire out, if you like, the works facilities you could take your car there, you could take your van, your lorry. They would, uh, as it says on there, do body repairs, maintenance, um, MOT testing and servicing. 
on uh, just about anything and painting as well so you could use the what had been bus facilities as i say you could take your van there your lorry um you could take your own car for mot to try to make it a commercial garage it didn't really work it closed down um in the early 90s i think about 1994 and uh, as i said it was demolished and they built a, a supermarket on the site of it but yeah it was a brave attempt to try and make the uh, central works profitable and to get it some work uh, 614 carried the advert and as i said earlier on 156 did as well uh, i said i'd mentioned that one f156 hat the dennis dominator they both carried an overall advert for the uh, the garage so we are in april 1994 shot of 615d 615 mkh the last of the batch of the royal minibuses Again, new in January 1987, withdrawn in August 1996, when most of the survivors were withdrawn as a result of the delivery of a new batch of Mercedes minibuses. This one was named King, Egg King Egbert, um, believe it or not. And there it is on the muck behind Hull bus station. As you can see, the blinds are set for a competitive service, the uh, 63 to Castle Hill Hospital via Cottingham, traditional East Yorkshire Territory. So this was still during the bus war. In fact, it might have been slightly afterwards that what they came to a bit of a coordination agreement, so they shared a lot of the routes between them. And I think 63, if I remember rightly, was shared between East Yorkshire and uh, KHCT. Again, you can see the kind of problem that Cleveland Transit had when they took over. There's a general area of scruffiness about the bus. The uh, driver's door, for example, is in a different shade of maroon to the rest of the vehicle, and the paint just generally faded and darkened around. They had a, a big job to smarten up the fleet, and they did manage to do it, um, as we'll see in the next part. So we have a shot from February 1994 of a Scania single-decker 703F703BAT. This batch were delivered in September of 1990, sorry, correction, September 1988. Um, they introduced what became known as the dual-purpose livery, as you can see here. It's still uh, carrying the original livery basically white with three tone blue bands and the name Kingston upon Hull spelled out on the side. This batch, um, 701 to 706, were marketed as city slickers when they were new. Um, they came with high-backed coach seating and they were initially used on Route 12 to Brandzone that went down quite a part of Holderness Road. Holderness Road was uh, kicking off with competition even back in 1988. East Yorkshire had uh, introduced route masters on their uh, city link in other words, David Costa buses in their independent um, ownership before they were taken over by KHCT. They were running down there. So KHCT's answer was to try and go for quality and they uh, bought this batch of uh, high-back seated Scanias and initially deployed them on there. They, they worked around various routes um, after that. They didn't stick on there very long. But as I said, they were marketed as city slickers and they were named after um, posher parts of London. 703 was named Piccadilly when it was delivered. As you can see, it's looking quite sorry for itself here in uh, this shot. Stagecoach refurbished um, this batch when they took over. They uh, fitted bus seats. They took out the soft trim. They had um, carpeting around the sides and the ceilings when they were new. And they took all that out and put laminates in. Uh, so they fitted bus seats um, for 50 passengers. They fitted opening windows as well rather than the sort of forced air ventilation system they had when they were new. And they just generally spruced them up. This is the same bus, uh, 703 F703 BAT. Uh, taken around 1997, I think, this, it's got the um, Cleveland Transit livery with Stagecoach fleet names applied to it. Eventually, the batch were transferred down to Stagecoach Devon in uh, the early 2000s, and they all worked around there. Uh, and I believe this bus was sold to Chepstow Classic Buses after Stagecoach had finished with it. As you can see, it looks a lot smarter. And the refurbishment wasn't to most enthusiast tastes. They preferred them as they were originally. But uh, it certainly looks a lot smarter than in the last shot. There's another Jeff Jones photo from October 1993 of another one of the batch. This is 705F705 BAT. Um, as you can see, also looking quite sorry for itself. It's lost its fleet name from the side. The uh, Kingston upon Hull name. And the front has been partially repainted as well. When it was new, this one was named Mayfair. It was also refurbished, um, as were the rest of the batch, the same as 703 that we saw uh, in the last photograph. 
and again it passed to stagecoach Devon uh, and then this one went to Chepstow Classic Buses as well. The final shot for this uh, video, or the final photograph for this video, I've got something else to show you as well uh, just before I sign off. Uh, show on the another Scania Metropolitan's the video. This is slightly later than the rest of it. It was taken in November 1998 in uh, Hull bus station. This is the former 411 KRH 411P. Now, the bus histories I've been uh, sort of telling you about the vehicles I got from the PSV circle history of Hull. Unfortunately, they've missed out the uh, subsequent history of this vehicle, 411. So uh, it's not been possible to find out where it went uh, between withdrawal from Hull in 1986 and uh, when it appeared here in 1998. Apart from... It worked for the firm of Alec Head of Lutton near Peterborough for a while. I believe it was then we rebuilt it. Obviously in Hull service it would have had uh, sliding window vents as did the rest of them. As you can see it's been fitted with hopper vents which appear to have come out of a Reading Metropolitan. It's had a new uh, front destination screen fitted as well. That's off a London DMS fleet line by the look of it. The uh, London Metropolitans had three part screens, uh, not two parts. So it appears to come off a DMS fleet line. I believe it was Alec Head who uh, rebuilt it like that. At the time of this photograph, it was working for Bluebird, of uh, formerly of Hesel, by this stage of Hull. Um, I believe their vehicles passed to Amvale um, not long after this photo was taken. I don't think this one passed to Amvale. It finished up in the Glasgow area as a semi-preserved vehicle. And an attempt was made to uh, bring it back down um, to England. I'm not quite sure whereabouts it was heading for. But uh, a preservation group bought it, um, sent a tow truck up to recover it. Now, unfortunately, the Achilles heel of the Metropolitan was that the uh, body structure tended to rot. As you can see, although this one's had a lot of rebuilding, um, you can just about make out the fact that the back is drooping, which means it's suffering from some sort of corrosion in the framework. And when the preservation group attempted to tow it down from Scotland, um, the tow truck basically set off and pulled the front off it. It was that rotten. Uh, so they ended up having to scrap it. Parts of it, I believe, went into the restoration of the uh, preserved London Transport Metropolitan uh, MD60, if I remember rightly, its fleet number. So parts of it live on in that vehicle. But uh, yeah, a sad end. It was the last survivor, as far as I'm aware, of the whole Metropolitan's and it's a shame it couldn't be saved, but it was just too far gone. As I say, that was the Achilles heel of the Metropolitan, was the uh, body corrosion. And just finally, before I sign out, I'd like to show you this. I just uh, recently acquired this on the internet. I used to have one, but it uh, got torn and got thrown out. This is a poster from 1989, commemorating the 90th anniversary of municipal transport in Hull. As you can see, it's got pictures of various vehicles from the trams, the early motor buses, the uh, Coronation Trolleybus there, coming down to later buses. At the time this poster would have been published, the uh, most recent, the most modern buses in the fleet were the F-registered Dennis Dominators, so you've got one of those there in the middle. You've got one of the X-registered Atlanteans there next to it, and the dual door Atlanteans on the other side, Kingstonian coach. The various marketing slogans from the time, um, hands up for the blue and whites and just a ticket. So yeah, a very, very nice period piece. So that's it for part two of this series. Um, part three will, uh, as I say, show vehicles mainly in the Cleveland Transit era, so in the lighter blue livery with the yellow and the white. Uh, we're looking at having four parts, I think. I'm still acquiring some slides of KHCT. Uh, and I'm slowly printing them. The delay is the fact it costs quite a bit to print the slides off. So I'm going to split it up over various paydays and things. That's uh, why the delay is taking place in the various parts coming through. But yeah, part three, uh, about a month from now, will uh, feature the Cleveland Transit era. And then part four will go back mainly to the council era, I think. Uh, and that should be it, unless I happen to acquire any more slides. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Please uh, check out part one of this series if you haven't seen it already. But take care of yourselves, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.